Okay, at this point I've shown you how to set up a simple interest table and a compound interest table. So now we're going to look at a scenario where you have payments involved. Um, so rather than imagining a bank where the interest is good for you and you're gaining money, we're going to look at a scenario where you've taken out a loan on an apartment you're buying, which is called a mortgage. Uh, the mortgage is $100,000 and you're still at 5% interest. And now you're going to make payments on that loan to reduce the size of the loan. So you can afford 15,000 per period. And the question now is how many years will it take to pay off the mortgage? So let's make some adjustments to our table. Let's increase our principal to a hundred thousand. And going to need to make that a little wider so that those numbers show correctly. Our rate is still 5% interest. Remember I set up those previous formulas so that it would copy all the way down when I changed just this first cell. Don't need to do anything with interest. And before we talk about how to put the payments in, let's have a quick look at after 15 years, that loan would go from $100,000 to $208,000 if you don't make any payments. So important to make your payments, otherwise your debt will just continue to grow. So how do we put payments in? What we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to right click, we're going to insert, and that'll insert a new column. Now, notice none of the numbers changed. When you insert a column, everything shifts, so don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna make this just a little bit wider. And we're going to add in a payments column. So it is important to understand that this is the amount of money you owe to the bank. So if you're gonna make a payment, you need that to be a, essentially a negative number, right? That's going to lower the amount of the loan. So we can still put 15,000 in. And the payment is going to be the same all the way down. But again, it's a good idea to set that up. If I go to the second cell and just set equal this cell, and then I copy and paste it all the way to the bottom. Now, any change I make to payments here will reflect all the way down. So let's try 20,000, see how it changes it all the way down. Okay, whoops, I think I did 150. There we go, okay. So what we need to do is we need to alter the amount formula. So we still want it to be the principal this one plus the interest, but we want to subtract the payments. So we're just going to go add in the formula by clicking up here, minus, click on this cell, and now we're all set. So it is important to also understand when I change the formula in a cell, that will not change the cell formula all the way down. So I do need to go back to here and copy and paste. And once I do that, now the formula, if you watch the formula up here as I click, it's changing to reflect which column you're in. Okay, that's it. That's the only thing you have to do is add a, a payments and you're good to go. Now the question is, how many years does it take to pay off the mortgage? So we're assuming these periods are in years for this particular example. The key is to look at where it goes negative. So at the end of the eighth period, you still owe $4,508, but you would owe much less than that. So it would be somewhere in the ninth period. So if they wanted you to round it to the nearest year, you could say it would take eight years. It looks like it would take about eight years and maybe three months if you wanted to get right down to the little nitty gritty of it. So that's the way you would answer that sort of question. And that's the way you can incorporate payments into a spreadsheet. Now, what payment would you need to pay off the mortgage in 10 years? So because the mortgage is now negative in the 10th year, what you, that means that we can afford to pay less. Let me make this a little wider so the numbers show there. We can afford to pay a little less. So let's try a payment. Let's drop all the way to 10,000 and see what happens. Well, 10,000, it looks like it's gonna take all the way to the 15th year before it goes negative. So that was too low. So somewhere between 10,000 and 15,000, let's try 12,500 and we'll go to year 10. We're still positive. That's pretty close. Looks like it would maybe take a little bit more than that. We'll try 13,000. That looks pretty good. So by 13,000, your ninth year, you're still owing $12,000 but by the end of the 10th year, you're in the negative. So somewhere in the middle of the 10th year. So unless the question specifies an exact dollar amount, a rounded number of about 13,000 would be a good answer. And notice all I had to do is change this cell. And because I'd set up my formulas, everything reflects all the way through.
So the beauty of setting up a spreadsheet like this with payments is this works for any sort of loan. It doesn't have to be a mortgage. It can be a car loan, anything like that. You can also use it to answer questions around scenarios. For example, say you're setting up a savings account that you know has compound interest, but you're going to regularly contribute to it. Instead of making payments, you can just make this like extra installments, like new money that you're adding in yourself. Um, and the only difference is in that case, you would just change this. You would add that so because you would want all of the money to be money that's added to what you have. And there you go. Hopefully that helps you understand using spreadsheets for these sorts of scenarios.